When it comes to the current state of UK politics, there's one name that sparks heated debates, Keir Starmer. The Labour leader has managed to polarise opinions across the board. Now throw Donald Trump and Nigel Farage into the mix, and you've got a political spectacle that grabs global attention. Let's break this down. The Mayor of London, is that who you said? Yes. Well, I think he's been a uh, not very good mayor from what I understand. He's done a poor job, crime is up, a lot of problems. And I don't think he should be criticizing uh, a representative of the United States that can do so much good for the United Kingdom. Uh, we talked about it before. He should be positive, not negative. He's a negative force, not a positive force. Donald Trump's recent remarks about London Mayor Sadiq Khan have set the stage. Trump didn't mince words, calling out Khan's leadership failures, citing rising crime rates and what he perceives as negativity. Trump's criticism wasn't just a jab at Khan. And if you look at what he said, he hurts the people of this great country. Is needed in this world to bring back peace. His leadership is needed to save the West. Hello, is this due to your gear? Down here. I'm hearing rumors that you're like. It was a broader statement about leadership and the need for positivity in governance. And while Khan might be brushing off these comments, it's clear they've resonated with many who share similar frustrations with the state of leadership in London. Right here is your who is fantastic, by the way. These images, I mean, who has images like this? And these were relationships, too. Look, here's now the king. Here's Charles with the guard. And this is the queen, Queen Elizabeth. It's a piece of history at the highest level. Look, it's Charles. So beautiful. And they'll see the most beautiful places in the world. There are no places like this. And hopefully he's going to be well, because he's a really good person. Camilla is fantastic. Trump's admiration for the UK, from his interactions with the late Queen Elizabeth to his warm words about King Charles, paints a picture of a man who values the historic bond between the US and the UK. Mr. President, as we look to the future, I'm confident that our common values and shared interests will continue to unite us. Tonight we celebrate an alliance that has helped to ensure the safety and prosperity of both our peoples for decades, and which I believe will endure for many years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you all to rise and drink a toast to President and Mrs. Trump the continued friendship. However, Trump's focus has shifted to Nigel Farage, whom he sees as a strong alternative to Starmer. Trump's endorsement of Farage isn't just political posturing, it's a signal of his belief in shaking up the establishment, something he's championed throughout his own career. Starmer, the UK Premier. Yes, he's coming tonight. What, what do you think of him? Some of his colleagues in government are quite critical of you. Well, I'm going to see him in, a, in about an hour, so I have to be nice, right? Yeah. But I actually think he's very nice. I think uh, he ran a great race. He did very well. Uh, it's very early, but he's popular, and I'll be seeing him, and I'll send you a regard. Keir Starmer's approach to Trump has been anything but warm. From opposing Trump's visits to aligning his Labour Party against Trump's policies, Starmer has made his stance clear. This opposition reached a peak when Labour members backed Kamala Harris during the US election, a move seen as a direct challenge to Trump's influence. Over two million people have signed a petition calling for Starmer's resignation, a staggering number that reflects growing dissatisfaction with his leadership. The petition isn't just a piece of paper, it's a cry for change, a declaration that Starmer's promises have fallen flat. From backtracking on key policies to failing to address the concerns of everyday citizens, Starmer's tenure has been marked by a growing sense of disillusionment. One glaring example of Starmer's leadership failings is his handling of the winter fuel allowance. He once criticized the previous government for considering cuts to this vital support, but later implemented similar reductions himself. This kind of hypocrisy hasn't gone unnoticed, especially by those who depend on such allowances to make it through harsh winters. It's a betrayal of the very people he vowed to protect, highlighting a pattern of broken promises and political double standards. 
was the big winner of the last election in the UK, and uh, he's a very spectacular man, uh, very highly respected, Nigel Farage. He's a little bit of a rebel, but that's good. You know, that's good. Don't change now. Trump's endorsement of Farage underscores the former US president's belief that the UK needs a leader unafraid to challenge the status quo. Farage's reputation as a political rebel resonates with Trump's own approach to governance. While controversial, Farage's straightforwardness and willingness to push boundaries make him a figure who could potentially steer the UK in a new direction. Trump's support for Farage and his criticism of Starmer reflect a broader frustration with the political establishment. Trump views Starmer as part of the old guard, a leader more focused on maintaining the status quo than addressing the pressing issues facing the UK. This sentiment is echoed by a growing number of UK citizens who feel let down by Starmer's leadership. Congratulating President-elect Trump on his historic election victory. As the closest of allies, the UK and US will continue to work together to protect our shared values of freedom and democracy. And having, having had dinner with President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago, I look forward to working with him in the years to come. What's clear is that Starmer's strategy of staying silent amid mounting criticism isn't working. The public's frustration is palpable, and their demands for change are growing madder. Whether it's Trump's vocal endorsements, Farage's defiant stance, or the millions signing petitions, the message is the same. The UK is ready for a new direction. The political landscape is shifting, and the old playbook isn't cutting anymore. Starmer's inability to deliver on his promises and address the concerns of the public has created a vacuum, one that figures like Farage and even Trump are eager to fill. Whether you agree with their politics or not, it's undeniable that they've tapped into a sentiment that Starmer seems to have overlooked. Starmer, the UK Premier. Yes, he's coming tonight. What, what do you think of him? Some of his colleagues in government are quite critical of you. Well, I'm going to see him in, a, in about an hour, so I have to be nice, right? Yeah. But I actually think he's very nice. I think uh, he ran a great race. He did very well. Congratulating uh, President-elect Trump on his historic election victory. As the closest of allies, the UK and US will continue to work together to protect our shared values of freedom and democracy. And having, having had dinner with President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago, I look forward to working with him in the years to come. So, what's next for the UK? Will Starmer find a way to reconnect with the public? Or will he continue to lose ground to voices calling for a shake-up? One thing's for sure, the conversation is far from over. And as Trump, Farage and the British public continue to challenge the status quo, the pressure on Starmer to step up has never been greater. What do you think about the state of UK leadership? Is it time for a change or can Starmer turn things around? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like for more updates on the political drama unfolding in the UK.